Welcome back, ladies and gents. This is Mr. Scary Muffin, and as always, maybe always from now on, is Julia. And we are going to be jumping into the final game from the Burnaby City Championships. And I don't think Julia's seen this one yet, and I've only kind of watched it as well. But it's going to be between uh, Ricky the Gao, Gao on the right, and Carl the Angel, Anglaise, on the left. And uh, Julia, you're really close friends with Carl, and I'm really close friends with Ricky. Who are you going to be rooting for in this match? Both of them. I'm just rooting for a good game, guys. But I'm guessing that Carl probably won simply due to the fact that he was in top cut. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Um, Ricky is playing my deck of choice for this current format, which is Le Blastoise Caldeo. And Carl has something going on. He's got Landorus out. I think he's just playing straight up Landorus Mewtwo. I don't even know at this I point. I'm told by him he's running um, Landorus, Tornadus, Mewtwo, Buffalo. Okay. And that's actually a really bad matchup for Carl in this case because Blastoise Caldeo, if it gets set up, and it can get set up by turn two, it's, it can pretty much rip apart um, Landorus Mewtwo because Landorus is weak to water and... Uh, Blastoise Caldeo tends to run a lot of Mewtwo's, which will straight up counter the Mewtwo. All right, double call for the win. Yeah, and I think Carl actually did take one loss before Top Cup, so I actually do not know how this match went. Or is this the Top Cup match? This is the the finals, the finals final, the the very number one. Whoever wins it takes it all, except for the second person's prizes. This is the top Cup match, hey? Yeah, uh, we're skipping we're skipping right to the end here, just because I don't know how much time we have, so. Yeah, and I never got to see this, because I actually left before the last match. I didn't know he got to the finals. That's awesome. It's exciting, right? So, okay, so you don't know, yeah, no, no, absolutely nothing. No, I have no idea actually wins this at all. Okay. All right, so uh, it looks like Carl gets to start. So he's going to pull up the Tornadus, and there's nothing to hit except for the Caldeo. Did he hit a switch off that Juniper is a question. He did play the plus power. Do you know anything about Carl's deck? Because I know you guys sometimes test against each other, but he hasn't been playing that much. Yeah, no, and he didn't actually play um, against me with this mat with this deck yet. Um, I play mostly against Ken right now because I haven't seen Carl in a while. But uh, but no, yeah, as far as I know, because I did watch a couple matches with um, with Ken and them. Yeah, he runs it in order to have counters to a lot of different things. Um, that's why he has the Buffalo right for even bad matchups, because obviously there's always the X's somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, I know he does go heavy whatever is going to work, right? So he usually, obviously, you know, Mewtwo, Tornadus, Landorus, Buffalo, whichever he needs, he'll just go for it. <laughs> that's what I, and then that's always his play style too. He's very intimidating. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Carl's like my venom. Every time I face him in Top Cut, he always has the matchup that I did not want to have. Uh, when same time last year in cities I was playing Shawnee Plume and he played the only cake in the entire uh oh. tournament and I get paired up against him and I'm just like, Why do you hate me? Everything else was eels and then Shiny Plume rips apart eels and I was gonna be like, Yeah, I can do this. I actually remember that deck. Um that was back in the day when um, I was running Durant, I think, actually, a while ago. Uh, and, yeah, I beat him once with Durant, but not most of the time. <laughs> All right, so um, Ricky gets two squirrels down, which gives him the opportunity to get the Blastoise up on his second turn. He does rush in with Caldeo, so that, uh, basically, it's a sacrificial Caldeo. He knows that uh, Carl essentially has to two-shot almost anything that he throws up, so he, he probably is um, holding on to a scoop up or some other heal. He starts the Stadium War by dropping the Sky Arrow for the one less retreat, and uh, he passes his turn over to Ricky, I think, or... Uh, no, he did lay a plus power, so... Oh, okay. I think we're, we're at least going to see uh, Hammerhead here. Okay. Hammerhead is such a s stupid strong attack. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't seem like a lot. It, it's better as a starter, though. Like, late game, it's a lot tougher unless you're matched up against eels just because it's not as strong later game, I feel. But uh, if you can start with it, like like Carl did, even though he didn't get the fighting first turn, it's it's a lot... It's a b much bigger threat. But not to the squirtles. Yeah. <laughs> hey, not to the squirtles. Don't pick the squirtles because they're immune to uh, snipe damage. 
which pretty much is one of the reasons why this deck is doing so well. So there's a scoop up for the heals, and he lands it. Gets rid of that damage. Gonna push up the other Caldeo here. Oh no, it's gonna push up a Squirtle. Okay. Russian. So I think that's that's a better move. It doesn't really matter. It's not like you have to have things on the bench. Oh, and also the Sky Rail makes it so it's a free retreat. Never mind. So. Yeah. yeah. But it does it still doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have see, infinite see Russians. I like. Um, I like uh, you know being careful about what you have on your bench and what you have in your active. That's a that's an that's an eel trait right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta be watching all that. Uh, so it is still Rookie's turn right now, I believe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wh I mentioned the Stadium War earlier, and uh, mm -hmm. basically what happens is that people at one point, you know, if you need a Skyro in your deck, you run like one, and that's it. And the problem is, is that. Uh, if somebody has a counter stadium, then you lose that stadium that is sometimes really important. For a while there, there was really only one good stadium, and that was Sky Arrow Bridge. And yeah. so people weren't really scared of losing it, because what are you going to bump it off with? Another Sky Arrow Bridge? That's fine by me. Well, you uh, can't. It's actually part of the card rules. Right, you right. cannot remove it with the card of the same name. Basically, what I'm saying is yeah. that once you put that Sky Arrow Bridge, you were pretty certain they'll stay yeah. there the entire game. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the setup decks now have at least a one-off of Tropical Beach, which means... The, you know, they counter each other. Whoever lays down the stadium first, like, there you go. Like, there you go, yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, whoever lays down the stadium first is basically opening themselves up to lose that stadium because the counter stadium can come down. Even if they're not using the stadium, then uh, you lose that ability to get that free retreat. Um, but Carl might be running two. We don't know that. I know for a fact that Ricky runs at least two Tropical Beach and a Poker Center. Yeah. Which is oh, the Poker Center is Poka Center is a really big twist actually. Um he, he gave up a super scoop up slot for that Poker Center and I actually really like that idea. I might steal that from him. <laughs> just because you can rush in, heal, and then rush back in and use your attacker again, it just makes um Exactly. And that's why that's why it's in my eels too, right? Because you know when you retreat your claws and stuff. So I definitely see the value in the Poker Center too. But yeah, for setup you do need tropical beach. There's nothing scarier than ending somebody into a tropical beach. Oh though. Stadium Wars. Oh, Stadium number two. All right, yeah. yeah. But like you said Ricky still has two. Um, I don't think Carl would play more than the two mm -hmm. Skyro. So. So and Carl, I don't think because uh, Carl's game finished after Ricky's uh, game, and he didn't get a chance to see uh, Ricky play against Mark. And the game against Mark, uh, they were trading off stadiums quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Believe it or not, even though it was a mirror match. Um, but yeah, it made a difference. But Ricky did at least get one use of that Tropical Beach, and Tropical Beach, of course, is when uh, you get to end your turn and draw up to seven instead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he shows his hand off that end. He had the nuts, apparently. Bunch of energies, evolution. Kinda yeah, I think I saw, like, ener yeah, energy retrieval, juniper, water, yeah. Fun times. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, but even though Carl got rid of that hand, there's still a lot of threat because Ricky's just going to be going six up, so he was just he's only minus one in terms of cards. Well, not really. Once he starts his turn, he's going to draw another one, right? So Yeah, but then it's still minus one point. because he could have been eight. Eight, eight, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ricky, of course, is running the Lugia sleeves, just acquired from Connor just yeah. that day. I acquired Joltik ones from him. They're so cute. Yeah, Jasmine got some uh, Eevee, Eevee ones too. Yeah, I got the Eevee ones as well. Yeah, yeah, those are so cute too. Connor was selling those at cost, I believe. That's what Jasmine was telling me. Uh, yeah, they were a good deal, that's for sure, yeah. I don't know exactly what cost would be, but... Ten but bucks yeah. for sleeves is not bad. Uh, yeah, no Normally, sure. like, internet vendors would be selling them for, like, 15 25 Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was looking at before. That's why I never got any yet, because I was like, well, I'll just wait till Worlds. <laughs> when it oh, yeah, when, when the Japanese come uh, to town, because, of yeah. course, I'll mention this every single time, Worlds is in Vancouver this year. Makes a huge difference. Ooh. Yeah. Now I can actually go. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just win regionals uh, and nationals in Toronto. Yeah, no biggie. I'm yeah. just going to grind, whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm still going to go for the grind, but I think, don't you have, do you have to have a minimum number? You uh, need to have a minimum number of participation points or play points. Not points? No problem. Yeah, so um, you don't need championship points, which is what they're kind of playing for right now. Ooh, Ooh Blast Toys, turn Blast three, I think, Blast Toys. Yeah, that's tough. He didn't get it off, you know, that Juniper at all, though. Yeah, and but turn three is still good, and Carl is hardly set up at this point. Yeah, I mean, Carl can only... Uh, well, Carl could one-shot the... Well, yeah. can finish off that Caldeo now, and Ricky can't really avoid that either, not even with a Poke Center, because Poke Center only heals 20. Yeah. 
Because he, he definitely is threatening his Kelly deck at this point if Ricky doesn't get more energy on the field pretty soon. Because, um, I mean, he could always rush in, right? So as long as he's drawing into supporters and energy, I think it could definitely go his way. Uh, but if Carl can, you know, keep after him, I think that it could definitely... Because Carl doesn't have any damage on his field, right? And mm -hmm. would is to knock it out, would need, what, seven energy? Uh, so in one shot. So Ricky here is trying to retreat, and uh, Carl pointed out that he only has to pay one, which is quote-unquote bonus, but Ricky actually wanted those in his discard because he had it. <laughs> 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 All right, a little, a little big hiccup. We crashed again, but that's okay. We're going to continue off roughly where we left off, and it's seamless. You don't even notice. Hand wave. All right, so Ricky got the bonus of not having to pay for the retreat, but luckily uh, there was another energy in his discard and he is able to energy retrieval two of them and attack this turn. So that's um, all works out for him in the end there. Yeah. He's going to capture up the Landorus and go for the quick two prize right away. The Evil Light on that one uh, Tornadus is going to be a bit of a hindrance because that means he needs seven energies on the Keldeo to kill yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, I don't think he even has enough in his discard at all. I'm pretty sure he might have one or two there. I actually don't think he's got any right now. Yeah, I don't think he has any energies in his discard anymore, but of course the rest of the cards are in his hand or in the deck. And yep. uh, that's where uh, Blastoise plays out of. But I think almost every Blastoise deck that I've seen now runs four energy retrievals. Um, yeah. It's pretty much standard. I mean, people say three is standard, but four is the new three. Yeah, and he's computer searching. I'm guessing he's either going to go for maybe a catcher. He might have his own Mewtwo set up um, c to counter uh, Ricky's Mewtwo, because Ricky doesn't have an extra bench space to put down another Mewtwo for a counter-counter yeah. easily. A counter-counter. Counter-counter, uh, yeah. He's probably going for the catcher, and I guess he has an energy to finish out the Caldeo before Ricky can scoop it up, because that's always going to be on his mind, is that any damage left on the field, any KO that isn't finished yeah. uh, is going to be... There a problem. Is. Yep. So there's that, and his last card is an energy. No, it's a juniper. juniper. Even better. Yeah. That's Carl, man. Just got the luck. Just got the luck. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, and people Did call it that. people call it luck sacking. Um, I don't even understand where the sack comes from. It's like you reach into your little bag of luck and you just pull it out and you just grab the whole sack. Yeah, and he and he needed to draw an energy off that, and I believe he did. I thought, think I saw. Oh, I could see, I could see a DC, I could see a uh, fighting. So yeah, he's got it there. Yeah, and that's what he needed in order to uh, power blast for the KO. Hey yo, it's KO. Woo. All right, and there is a XP share actually on the Mewtwo, so he's actually running quite a few uh, tools. It wouldn't surprise me if this deck used to be some sort of Garbodor deck at one point or another. Yeah. Hey man, that's a play. I played that when the met this meta first, like we first got rotated, and I played Garbodor, and everyone's like, "Why are you playing Garbodor?" And now people are starting to think it actually might be a good idea. Oh, uh, cool. I mean, uh, so he loses the DCE. Strange. He flip tails on Power Blast, and so he's forced to discard one energy. He chooses to go for the double colorless. Uh, I'm guessing because he's expecting maybe his tornado to be knocked out, and he wants the XP share to activate and get that energy off this mm -hmm. one. That would be the only reason in my mind, and we know he has a double colorless in his hand as well, but Ricky doesn't know that. Um, he's just wondering whether he can, Ricky can power up. He puts two energy on the second Caldeo, so it looks like Ricky might be going for two-hit strategy as opposed to uh, one slap strategy. Yeah. I, I do actually like that better, to be honest, simply because if he loads up one Caldeo with the seven energies he would need to knock that Tornadus out, he's just setting himself up for a Mewtwo KO. Like, it's, you know... But then he, he but then one energy retrieval means his Mewtwo will finish off that other Mewtwo, and then that's GG because he had taken all his prizes. But I'm guessing he doesn't have the cards in his hand, which yeah. is why he's setting this up. And yeah. so by this play, oh, it, reveals, it reveals that he doesn't really quite have the cards just yet. Yeah. But he does lay down a second Mewtwo, so he's ready for a Mewtwo war. And they're tied in prizes right now. This is this is kind of... I actually find it a little bit more exciting, uh, yeah. this type of game, rather than taking uh, one prize at a time, I think. It's math. Yeah. <laughs> rather than thinking of people taking one prize, I think of them as taking half a prize now. Yeah. Because that's the thing, yeah, if you have to take extras, it, it sucks. That's why when people don't play a lot of EXs, it's almost annoying. Because you're like, why is this taking so long? Why am I only taking one bribe? Yeah. All right, so second Blastoid comes up, and there is the Poké Center to remove the bridge. 
Um, but it doesn't prevent Tornadus from still being able to do 60 damage, because uh, what was the first one called? Blow Through? Yep, uh, yeah. Blow Through, it does 30 damage plus 30 for if there's a stadium in play. It doesn't matter which one it is. Yeah. So he's going to slap it once uh, for 110 minus the 20 for Evilay, so that's 90. So he can two-shot that easily. And it's the question of whether Carl's going to leave it up. I think he's just going to retreat it. And so Ricky's going to try to cost Carl that energy by putting the Pokemon center there. Uh, so that he loses energy off the field. And Ricky is probably convinced at this point that there's no hole in the deck because we only see fighting energies at this point. So every energy removed from the field is huge. Yeah, especially because um, Carl doesn't really run any acceleration besides uh, apparently that experience share, um, which I don't know if you could really count as acceleration, but I suppose it is. Um, yeah, he's just kind of manually attaching exactly, so... If you can force him to remove stuff, you can force him to remove mm -hmm. it. But he look. did pull out the switch, so... Shiny switch. Look at that glare. Yeah, um, all of his cards are shiny. Really? Except for except for one, he told me. I can't remember which one it is, but there's one card in there that is not shiny. Only one. How do people afford these things? Seriously. And Carl's not I even playing know. the deck that he was started off with in the format. Nope. He, I don't know, he just manages it. I'm always a little bit amazed myself. I still have two of his Mewtwo's that I'm borrowing, but he's like, yeah, go ahead, keep borrowing them, no big deal. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I never bought my own Mewtwo's. Not even when thing. they came out in tins? No. There was no point, because Carl was so nice, let me borrow them. <laughs> I just bought Rayquaza and D a Dark Rye tin. Alright, so Bianca for one. So much value. <laughs> okay, between Bianca and Sharon, like, because we know in most decks, uh, four Junipers, which force you to discard your hand, draw seven, and four ends, which is kind of a disruption, are pretty standard. But the last slots, we people normally have to pick between Sharon, draw three, or Bianca, draw until you have six in hand. So Bianca has the potential to be good, especially late game, but Sharon's very consistent. I've always been the Sharon guy. What about you? Um, I personally am Bianca, and then again, I do run um, four uh, energy, or sorry, four Ultra Balls and a computer search, right? So I'm always bianca for at least three, if not more. And also, because I don't tend to use them early game, because early game I'm not necessarily always discarding that much, or I'm getting ends or junipers or whatever it is, um, they're great to get off an end versus a Charon, because then you only get three cards, right? So I find that... I get, because also I do take prizes very fast, so I usually end up getting end to one, so, um, or two, so I actually prefer Bianca that way, because I find that it's a little better late game, um, especially with late game ends, uh, but Charon, yeah, it, it is more consistent for how many cards you're getting, obviously, right, because it's always three, but, um, also, if you start drawing three cards above your six cards, um, people are going to end you anyways. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Ricky empties his hand here, he, uh, attached, oh, bunch of energies onto Caldeo, retreats manually to get more energies into his discard, energy retrievals those to his hand, attaches those back in, heals his Avenge Cal Caldeo, and then slaps the um, Cal uh, the Tornado's Silly. Um, but now he is down to the two cards that he got off the prizes, so he has no idea whether he has a draw support or not. Carl has no idea whether he has a draw support or not, but he pushes up the Mewtwo anyways. The Mewtwo He's has no energy on it. Yeah, he's got a DC in his hand, though, which is which should be nine energies total, um, which would mean um, that is a 180 hit points. That is a KO. But he's taking off, yeah, he's using Tool Scrapper to take off his own uh, XP series part with Noviolite. Yes, he does. That is a play I've never really seen before. Oh, that, that actually happens quite a bit, especially if you're running more than one kind of uh, tool, especially in Dark Ride decks. Sometimes you want to take off your own tool in order to slap something else on there. But in that case, if you play it, then do, aren't you forced to remove both your tools because you have to do as most as you can? Up to two. Okay. Yeah, so you can remove up to two in play. So you can choose one. Uh, you can choose your own. You can choose your opponent's. It doesn't matter. A mix and match. All right, so Ricky is living on a prayer right now. He needs three energies down on the Mewtwo to finish the game. Um, and Carl has maybe an option to remove that last Caldeo who has uh, 60 damage on it right now. I think he already healed it, so... <laughs> Ricky, I think he's thinning out his deck level balls for a Squirtle. Um, he already healed off his Caldeo too, so yeah. that's good, using that Poké Center. Yeah, mileage. Yep, <laughs> value, as you would say. <coughs> and he passed. Oh, no energy. Yeah. 
But at least, yeah, if it, it, that's a good idea to leave Amos Blasters up there. He doesn't need it, and then Carl can only take one prize unless he captures. Yeah, he can only take half a prize, <laughs> as I call it. Right, so yeah. But if you can capture up that other Blasters, take it out later, too. Why not? Because <clears throat> the thing is, too, is if he doesn't KO it, I mean, Ricky's got to, can rush in, right? But still, it's always going to be sitting there. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm really liking the uh, Blasters Caldeo deck. It's very versatile, despite the fact that it only has a, essentially three lines of Pokemon. Um, and two of those lines are basics. The only issue is, well, my thoughts would be that the issue might be Sigilith, but they can always attach with Blasters. But then you've got tons of energy committed to a Blastoise. So. Well, that's fine, because the Sigilith will have still have to two-shot the Blastoise in the end. Yeah. But yeah, there's two that ended up top cut, I believe. Um, yeah, there is two Blast Race decks and two eels. Yep. I know the two eels had to face against each other, unfortunately. Yeah, Dave had to face him, eh? Oh, that's crazy. I saw the first. I saw the top eight match uh -huh. between Dave, uh, and I can't remember who. Yeah, a uh, Garbodor made it in as well, and that played against a uh, Blast Race Caldeo, which would have been a good match, except uh, the Garbodor deck drew pretty dead through the entire best of three series and this is a best of three series and uh, we might be splitting it up into three separate videos um, I'll have to decide when we get to that point alright so he's gonna pull up the Caldeo but how many energies does he need to kill it uh, he needs enough to he needs six energy between the two of them in order to kill it and there's not an easy way to get three more energy down so he needs a, a DCE and an energy switch and I don't think he have a double color of this in his hand though doesn't look like it, but if he can get DC plus power, because I know he runs plus power, if he's searching for it now, he can retreat to his Tornadus and KO that way. I don't think he has a double colorless in his hand. Double colorless is right there, but he's already used a computer search, which means he can't skyla for computer search to then search for the double colorless. Computer search lets you get anything in your deck, which is so great, but you know it costs you two cards to do it, and you only can run one of it in your entire deck. Yeah, because it's A-spec, right? Yeah, and some people so many times forget that uh, they don't have to show the card because you <laughs> you're only allowed to take a certain type of card, right? Because you've got to prove that's all you're taking. Mm -hmm. But for anything that allows you, like twins, right? Same thing. If it allows you to take whatever you want, you don't have to show a card. I miss twins. I think that was one of my favorite cards in the previous format. Durant, Durant. Twins was the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're Duranting. I'm devouring all day long. Focus Center would have been amazing back then. <laughs> <laughs> or even Sky or Bridge. Can you imagine? Durant yeah. Sky <laughs> Alright, so he, he lays down um, another 60 on the Caldeo. So Caldeo is pretty much one shot from anything now. Yeah. Uh, and that would be Carl's last two prizes. But Ricky's looking at his deck, looking at the back of his deck, <laughs> counting cards, trying to figure out how many energies he's got in there. Um, he needs a butt ton. But he has to Skyla, so he can't Juniper, so mm -hmm. you can only imagine that he's trying to get um, a Switch or something. He gets a Juniper? Juniper. Oh, this little sketch. I don't know. Um, I think he's counting on Carl not having a Catcher, and he might be attaching Retreating this turn and pr living on a prayer. Early switch. Yeah, yep. attach and retreat. There's no Switches in Caldeo decks. Oh, goodness. Why wouldn't there be? There should always be at least one switch in there. No, because instead of running switch, you just run more energy retrieval. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I had three energy retrieval, one switch in my deck in a previous build, and I'm like, you know what? Energy retrieval just does so much more in the same. What is he going to push up? He's going to push up... Yeah, Blastoise. Obviously. I don't think the heal is necessarily going to matter, but it might. It might. It puts, it puts him away... Carl needs one energy on the Mewtwo. And uh, needs a double colorless on the tornadoes at this point, and also yeah, slow me too down simply because now Keldeo doesn't have it, as much energy on it. Right? Basically, he's, he's when you're stuck at a point where you can't do anything, you just have to force your opponent to need more specific cards as much as possible. So in this case, he's forcing Carl to need an energy and a catcher, and yeah. he might not have any catchers left in his deck. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. He's played quite a few at this point. See, I think he's played three. I want to say three. Um, well, if you're cheering for Carl, you want to say three. Not four. I mean, if I'm cheering for Carl, I want to say two. Yeah, 
Oh, yeah, oh, Carl hasn't played any of them. I'm sure his entire deck is full of catchers now. Got two in his deck. The last two prizes are catchers. Oh, good time. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think at this point, the only way Ricky can take this is to kill that Mewtwo. That's really the only way he can go about this. He needs to attach three energies to a Mewtwo and go in for the KO. Dead it. So everybody's counting cards in their deck right now. I wonder if they're thinking about decking each other out at one point. It never happens, except with Durant, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah or as Jack was telling me, you can just use Larvitar and use Mountain Eater. <laughs> he well, did that for at, a at this point, in the, uh, uh, with this level of players, most of the time people are good enough that they will never deck themselves out on purpose. They will be figuring it out. Ooh, pulls that Mewtwo right back up, says, nope, you don't get to go back. Now if he can Juniper for three energies... He oh. passed again. He, he's not using his Juniper. He's he's looking at how many energies he has in his deck so that he can use it at the right time. Because he needs... What did we say last time? Like seven? He would need seven to KO... Uh, oh no, so he would need seven uh, energies to KO something within a Violet, yeah. Yeah, so he needs seven to, to kill either one of those. And... Um, I don't know where he's going to get those from because he's used a lot of energy retrievals at this point. Doesn't, I don't know how many more energies he has left in his deck, but I think he's going to try to bide as much time yeah. so that he could uh, get it down so he can just draw his entire deck off that Juniper, maybe. Because he's already saw how many energies and whatever like tool scrapper if he has left in his deck using that Skyla a couple turns ago. It's a tough area, so he knows how many energy retrievals and energies he has. He knows exactly that number. Um, if he wants to, almost always you want to attack with the Caldeo, in this case, not with the Mewtwo. Yeah, but the thing is, if he can't get enough energy, um, he'll just get two-shotted, right? Because uh, the thing is, if, even if he attaches one energy to Mewtwo in next turn, and then hits once, then he gets return hit, he won't actually know, get KO'd. He can just retreat to his Mewtwo and then take it for the win, right? But right. Which is why it's dangerous if he's going to have to attach that much energy. He can only do it with Keldeo if he's going to take the KO. That's it. That's true. Yeah, so... And the other thing is, if he buys one more turn, he can heal the Keldeo, so that Kel so even with a plus power, Carl can't kill it. Because he's at 60 right now, so he would need a plus power and an energy to and catch her KO right at this point. Carl's sitting on a lot of cards right now. He can he's gonna take the one prize, the half prize, off the blast toys. And Ricky's probably gonna push up the other blast toys at this point, I think. Push up the blast toys so you can heal. <laughs> I think yeah, he's pushing up the Mewtwo, I guess, just in case he Pretty can. Pretty much it. revealing that he's gonna he's gonna rush in, I think. Well the thing is I like him moving his Mewtwo up instead. Just it gives him another out if he does end up being able to catch her. Ooh, Skyla, yeah, I think he's going for it. Um, if he can catch her up the Mewtwo um, and attach... What is that, a golden catcher at the very top? I can't see. Uh, I can't tell what that is, but actually you would need... I realize the Mewtwo retreated. You actually need five... He's showing the camera a little bit really quickly. Oh, no, that's an energy retrieval. So there's an energy retrieval, at least one energy in there, and I saw a catcher previously. He's going to take the energy retrieval this turn. And yeah, I did. I did see catcher number four. I saw it. It's gonna take before. the N. Okay, so the N is gonna make a huge difference now because it's gonna put Carl down to one card, uh, but he can't use it this turn because he already plays Skyla. So interesting. It's gonna pass again. This actually puts a lot of pressure on Carl, who has a very big hand and now has to figure out how much he can use in one turn. <laughs> Carl <laughs> needs Carl needs plus power, double colorless, two energy switch, and a switch. So he needs five cards in, in order to win right now. I need to... He, hopefully he's got some kind of discarding cards. He wants to get rid of anything in his hand he does not want to end, be end into. But he passed. Yeah, well, he attacked. He did, he did 60. He, yeah, he didn't even attach an energy, which is interesting. I think he's trying to prevent... Um, being catcher because there is a catcher left and Carl knows that. So there's two energies down. Catches the Mew to ends them down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all those cards going right back into the deck. So painful. Yeah, there's a reason he wasn't using them. So I don't think he wants to be ended into them very much. Well, I mean, he didn't attach the energy down to his Mewtwo because he didn't want to make it easier for Ricky to kill that Mewtwo. But I think that's probably the last catcher that Ricky has as well, and they might be both completely out. Uh, Buffalo 
There's oh. another energy. Ricky's gonna go in, slap that guy. For one... What is that? For 90. For 110 90. minus 20. And he's down to one card. Carl's got two cards, and he scoops here. So it's gonna set up for the next match. What are your thoughts here for this one? Uh, Ricky takes game one. Yeah, I think it was... Yeah, he just got set up so fast, and Carl definitely did the best he could, but I think, you know, there was some big times there where he needed some cards, and he just did not get them. <laughs> I don't know where they were, but they were not in his hand. Well, what do you what do you think Carl needs to do differently coming into the next uh, match? Because now he gets to choose if he wants to go first or the second, and um, gives him an opportunity to set up the way he wants to set up. I think he's got to play, in my opinion, a little more aggressively uh, in order to get rid of those uh, squirtles as quickly as possible if he can take a few prizes uh, because later on when it does get down to wars if he's two prizes ahead that's already a big match mm -hmm. and yes of course I think the match ended fairly fast-ish I mean it's 25 minutes on my clock right now oh, actually no that, that was a quite a long match yeah uh, <laughs> like okay. half an hour but they have an hour to play out three matches and if Carl doesn't take uh, four prizes in this game. This game doesn't even count, and Ricky just wins the whole shebang. So time is also not Carl's friend, but luckily he's playing a fast deck, so that should be okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm rooting for both of them though, because this is a very interesting matchup. Because Carl's kind of almost running out, but I would almost call a rogue deck. It's not a deck that is like you know. Oh it's, yeah, that's it's a deck. haymaker. It's a big basic deck. Exactly. It's a exactly. rush down, beat down deck. If he basically, you'll know whether Carl's in a good spot after five turns or so. Yeah, and the thing is too is that with that tornadus, I, that's what I'm saying. I hope he play like uh, I think is yeah. He's just got to draw what he needs. But um, that's why I almost wish to see a little more aggressive play sim at the beginning, only because um, he can easily KO those Squirtles one hit, right? DCE uh, and a Stadium. That's it, right? So. If he can get a decent start off of a Tornadus for the Squirrels, I think he'd be in a If you can get a God start, you mean. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I've had those before. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so they're going to get set up, and we're going to cut away here, and we'll come back for the... We'll come back next time. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys.